What's up YouTube? It's Peter with the Outdoor Adventures team. And this is my review of the Goal Zero Boulder 200 briefcase. So we'll touch a little bit on the, the quality and uh, a few use cases. And then if you stay tuned towards the end, we'll get into some of the pros and cons. Let's get into it. So the Boulder 200 briefcase is the same quality that I've come to really expect from Goal Zero. It's really well made. The frame is very well made. It's got great corner protection. The componentry looks really good. The cables look good. It even comes with a little bit of a carrying case. So really nicely done. Let's take a look at some of the specs. So Goal Zero laid out for us the charge times, some general information, the ports, and the solar. So you'll notice that the Yeti 500, which is what I run with it, is actually missing from this list. So I don't think the 500X was out yet when this was created, um, but it is a perfect match for the Boulder 200 briefcase. You also notice that they don't rate anything with charge times below the Yeti 400. So we did talk with Goal Zero and they had said that anything below the 400, like the 200 or the 150, runs the risk of being damaged by something like the Boulder 200. It's a little too much power to match up with those units. And then from a ports perspective on the Boulder 200, you're gonna need to use an Anderson pole. So for me who runs a 500X means I need an adapter. I need something to go from the Anderson pole to an eight millimeter so that I can bring it into the Yeti 500. We pulled this chart directly from the Goal Zero website. It's pretty handy. Across the top, you can see the different Yetis that they run. And then down the left-hand side, you can see the different panels. And they kind of meet in the middle where the solar charge times are. So you'll notice, for example, that the Boulder 200 briefcase does not pair with the Yeti 200 or the 150, as I'd mentioned before. And for the 500X, which is what I run, it's about three to six hours to charge up. So pretty respectable. That allows me to be able to charge pretty quickly in the morning from anything that I drew down overnight in a power outage. And it also gives me some flexibility to be able to still charge while having an output, like charging my MacBook, charging a tablet, uh, running my home office. So a little more to that uh, as we get further into the video. So let's see what it looks like to set this up. It is a 40 pound unit, but setup is pretty quick and easy. All right, so right now the panels are in pretty much full sun, charging the 500, and you can see I'm pulling in about 140 watts pretty consistently right now. So one nice feature about the uh, Yeti 500X, I think all the Goal Zero products, is that as it starts to get to a full charge, you can see right now my input's only 15 watts, but the panel is actually in direct sun, which means that I would normally be pulling in about 145 watts off the panel. And so it's slowed down at this last 2% to protect the battery. All right, so I'm running a little bit of a load test here. I've got my Boulder 200 panels plugged into my Yeti 500X here. And it's a little hazy right now, so you can see I'm only drawing in about 95 watts, um, kind of fluctuating between 95 and 110-ish. And my output right now is about 230, 235, somewhere in there. Right now I've got my home workstation plugged in. So it's got two 27-inch Thunderbolts and a MacBook Pro running off the Yeti right now. So as you can see, I could do that for a while, but I'm running at a deficit. So even if the panels were bringing in their full, which seems to be around 145, 150 watts, um, I would still be running at a deficit running my home office. So I'd be able to do this for a while, but I wouldn't be able to do this, say, all day if I didn't have power. So let's look at another scenario that's pretty common here in California. So we often have rolling blackouts, or in the fall we will have planned power outages to help support fire safety. I want to make sure that high winds don't knock down lines and start fires. So um, this happens pretty frequently. Uh, another use case might be if you know, you're know you around the campsite and you want to make sure that your things are all charged up or you know, after a day of off-roading and shooting, uh, I need to charge up my camera gear and uh, potentially even do some editing on my Mac. So um, in this scenario, I've got a MacBook Pro plugged in as well as an iPad. So we can kind of look at what it looks like to charge those two things that I know I always keep charged up. 
So you can see right now I have some clouds coming over. Um, my wattage dropped. But with this configuration, uh, my output's gonna range somewhere between 30 and probably 65 as an output, depending on what processes the Mac is running. And then typically my input out of the Boulder 200 on a clear day is about 145, 150 watts. So um, it can keep up really easily with this setup. I can charge you know, multiple phones, tablets, and be able to do a little bit of work at the same time. Uh, no problem with the input that the 200 provides. So let's talk about the pros and cons of the Boulder 200 briefcase. First off on the pros, it's really high quality as I mentioned before. Uh, the welds are great, the hardware is great, the corner protection is great. You know, all the components seem to be really high quality. So you're getting what you pay for. From an input perspective, you're going to lose a little bit of efficiency coming off of a panel as you convert you know, the sun into energy. So 145 watt input is pretty respectable out of a 200 watt you know, potential panel. Uh, they're also portable. You can fold them in half, put them right in your carrying case, and you can store them away or keep them inside your RV or your truck, whatever it might be. They pair with multiple units, so they'll pair with any of the units from the 500 and up. So the 500, the 1000, the 1400, the 3000. Uh, so they're versatile in, you know, in what they apply to for the uh, actual batteries. You can chain them with other panels. So you can you know, hook them with another Boulder 200 and increase your input if you've got a larger unit. Let's look at some of the cons. So out of the box, it's only got a six foot cable. So you're gonna need an extension for pretty much any scenario that you've got. Um, I have a 30 foot, you might even want a 40 foot extension cable to make sure that you can get from your panel to the unit that you're charging. It's a 42 pound panel, so pretty easy to set up, but you know, if you're uh, smaller stature or maybe not as strong, 42 pounds is a little bit cumbersome to take in and out of the carry case. Um, the position ability, so it's got really strong legs on the back side of the panel, but you have to be a little creative with how you angle it at the sun. Um, you know, I've seen competitors and other brands that have uh, more ability to be able to adjust to face direct sunlight. So a little bit of a con there. And then the carrying case. So the carrying case only unzips to reveal the top part of the case. So you have to be able to pull out that 42 pound panel um, while not, you know, just lifting up the case with you. It's also a soft-sided case, so there's really not a lot of protection when you're in storage or if you're throwing it inside of your RV or your truck bed or something. Um, it would be pretty easy to damage the panel uh, because the carrying case does not really protect the panel. So bottom line, would we recommend this product? Absolutely. The 200 is a phenomenal panel. I really like it. It charges up my 500 in three to four hours really easily. So super great. If you're gonna throw it into your truck bed or an RV or you know bring it to um, unpack at a campsite it is a really great option. My caveat would be for off-roading, I'll probably bring my 100 panel for charging just because it's a little smaller, a little easier to pack up, a little less overhead for me, you know, in, in just my Jeep. But the panel itself is absolutely amazing. So thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe and please leave any comments you have below. We are happy to address them um, and even produce more content to address any of the questions you might have. Thanks so much. Until next time.